Hey guys, what's up? Mad Season here, back with another video for you. Patch 7.3 brings us some pretty big features. We'll be visiting the corrupted home planet of the Draenei and the seat of power for the Legion, Argus. It has a whole new campaign, a new raid, dungeon, and a bunch of other stuff. But something that you may have seen or heard about is that you can't fly in the zone. This has sparked a big debate about whether you should be able to or not, so in this video, I thought I'd talk about it a bit. I'll share the pro-flying and the anti-flying arguments so you can decide on what side of the fence you're on. And I'll save my personal opinion for the end of the video, so when I'm making these initial points, I'll try to make them as neutral as possible. So, the flying versus no flying argument in general has been around for quite a while, ever since its inception in the Burning Crusade if I recall correctly. I'll start with the argument against it. There are a few big points to consider. Probably the most major one is that it makes the world feel smaller and less significant. If you can just simply fly over every obstacle, the mystique and challenge of the world is removed. I think this is the strongest anti-flying point because it's especially true for new expansions or zones such as Argus. Here you have this new planet we're about to embark on, and the argument is if you were able to simply glide over everything, it would downplay the sense of unknown and exploration. It's similar in a sense to the cape in Super Mario World where you can just cheese an entire level by flying over all of it. Kind of a weird comparison I know, but hey, I think it fits. And another argument is that it ruins world PvP. If everyone is flying to their destination, there's no real opportunities for conflict between factions. The reason why Vanilla had that Terran Mill vs. South Shore hub was because it was one of the first places where Alliance and Horde met while leveling. They were sent to the same questing areas on foot, walked on the same road, so naturally it became a PvP hotspot. Flying massively reduces the chances for PvP encounters to happen, and not only that, if you can simply fly away from your enemy at mock speed, they're quite easy to avoid as well. Another point is, it is just part of the expansion. You can still fly in the Broken Shore and every other zone in the Broken Isles, it's just Argus that's locked out. It was done before with the Timeless Isle and Pandaria, which some would argue that it would have been worse off with flying. It wasn't a huge zone, so there really wasn't any need for it. And the rare hunting aspect to it would have been trivialized with flying. So, they're applying the same mindset to Argus here, basically. Argus will of course be bigger than the Timeless Isle, but it also has a teleportation system set up as well where you can instantly travel to specific areas of the map. And the last anti-flying argument I wanted to bring up is what I mentioned earlier, and that's exploration. This one is kind of interesting because it's an argument used for both sides. The anti-flying side says that because you can fly, you're never exploring the world, going down different paths, or just poking around in general. The pro-flying side counters this by saying that it actually promotes exploration because you don't have to deal with mobs tagging you and getting dazed off of your mount, and because you can go faster overall, they feel more inclined to explore the world. And as for the other pro-flying arguments, the biggest one obviously is that it makes things easier. I probably don't need to bring this up since it's pretty obvious, but I guess I may as well for the sake of completeness. Being able to get your questing done faster, being able to get to your raid faster, etc. is important to a lot of people. They don't want to deal with getting constantly dazed off of their mounts. By the way, as an aside, why is it still in the game? I think something that would put a big chink in the armor of this whole argument is just removing days so there's some kind of middle ground. I don't know, it just feels like one of those weird old vanilla things that should have been removed when flying was introduced 10 years ago. Okay, sorry, I got off track there, back to the argument. So, just being able to do stuff easier and more quickly is a big point of the pro-flying side, obviously. Another issue people are bringing up though is that, with the way they unlock flying now, they kind of feel cheated. People went through the trouble of grinding out the Pathfinder Parts 1 and 2 achievements, and now they feel cheated because it's not active for the new zone. Now, if you want to get technical, the achievement does say that you can fly in the Broken Isles, and Argus is a new planet entirely. Nevertheless, it's just that aspect of assuming that you can fly for the rest of the expansion, and getting caught off guard like this is a big part of the uproar, I think. And lastly, another argument is a counter to the first point I brought up with the Anti-Flyers, and that's the fact that the world loses its depth and feels smaller if you can fly over everything. The argument against that is, it's adding content by restriction, which isn't the best game design. If they want the world to be bigger, make it bigger, and if they want it to have more depth, give it more depth. Add more to the game by adding more, not taking away. So anyways, there's a very abridged summary of the bigger points for both sides. If you ask my opinion, I think both sides have valid points. I agree that flying over everything takes away from the game in a sense, and I also agree that adding more content is the best way to add more content. I also agree that it's kind of lame that we did this achievement and we still can't fly, and at the same time, it is just part of the expansion and it's not the Broken Isles. Like I said, both sides make good points I think. 
For me personally, I guess my stance is that I'm pretty even on the fence to the point to where it's really not a big deal for me. I'd be fine with either route, but I guess if you force me to pick, I'd actually go with no flying. But like I said, it's not a big deal for me. So, what's the purpose of this video you ask? Well, I think it's still an interesting topic and I'd like to see what everyone's thoughts are. As for the question of what will Blizzard do and how will they react, I think they're going to hold their ground on this. They've been very much against flying for the past couple of expansions. In the Warlords of Draenor expansion, if you remember, the original plan was to have no flying at all. It was only after months and months of uproar on the forums that they later released the Pathfinder achievement to unlock it. And for Legion, flying was locked for the first several months until they finally released the achievement. When they make these expansions in zones, they have a huge value on the sense of danger and mystery to the world, and they don't want you to skip past all of it. So, I think that they're going to stick to their guns with no flying on Argus, just like the Timeless Isle in Pandaria. Or they could do the exact opposite. Hey, I make YouTube videos, I'm not a soothsayer. Let me know your opinions though, if you have any. Are you pro-flying in this zone, anti-flying, or do you just not care either way? For this video, I wanted to have a poll to get your thoughts. I'll have a link to it in the description, so go ahead and vote on that if you want. That's all I have to talk about though. I hope you found the video interesting or entertaining. Like it if you liked it, and thanks for watching. Peace.